So um, welcome to this 30 minute talk from Jens, Bernat and me about inventing together. Um, we have talked about it a lot, what we want to do for the keynote, and then we decided, so this is not the big conference and we only have 30 minutes, so let's talk about something that we do a lot and that is best translated by a German word, which is spinnen. It's German for, of course, spiders, but that's not the, the translation we're looking for. It's also the German word for being weird or crazy but that's also not the translation we mean. And it's also, it's a really versatile German word. It's also the German word for nerding out together. And since we're in between two um, uh, bigger releases of Snap, we basically spend a lot of time nerding out together, which is Spinnen in German. Um, we, we talk a lot, um, someone comes up with an idea and then we just try to build it. So for example, uh, Jens and I drove to Graz in a seven hour car drive and we talked a lot about, wouldn't it be cool if we could draw on sprites? And I said, yeah, wait, I, I got that puzzle project. Um, so now everyone has a puzzle project. Um, or um, And then we, we thought about how what can we do um, to create a puzzle from images or could we even draw on sprites might that be a good idea um, and this is just a representation from Jens Bernhard and me but of course we are way more people that also work together on snap and that nerd out together about snap and about ideas that we have um, and in this talk now we want to just present three projects or three blocks that we came up with um, recently, which are um, paste on, cut from, and the distance to block that now got a new input option. So um, I got the honor to present the paste on block, which is in Snap for quite a while now. Um, I hope most of you already discovered it, but if not, I'll um, show you what you can do with it real quick. So um, the paste on block is a block that lets, lets you paste an object on another object. So, or the costume of one object on the costume of another object. Here I made a little project just to show it. Um, we have that circular sprite and then we have that um, blue, big blue sprite and the big blue sprite is just turning all the time. And then we have the yellow sprite that's pasting itself on the blue sprite. So I'll show you that real quick. The yellow sprite moves and then it starts pasting its costume on the costume of the other sprite. And that's just an interesting new way of drawing maybe on sprites of pasting something on a sprite. And when we talked about that on our drive to Graz, which as I already mentioned is a really long drive, it's seven and something hours so you can talk a lot <laughs> and uh, then I, I remembered that I had that old project that I wanted to do um, with some kids from my environmental education class once and one of them was really into puzzles so he asked me if we if we could build a puzzle as a jigsaw puzzle and I said yeah I can do that in snap real quick and you can build the make a puzzle part real quick but actually cutting up the images was horrible so here's the project um it creates clones of a sprite and then these clones just go to a random position so that's kind of nice but i had to cut up all these images by hand because i didn't know how to do it in python back then um, and then he said yeah okay now i solved this can i have another one and i was like ah mm, okay let me go back to that uh, image program and let me export 25 more images and that was not really fun so we then ended up with another idea um, which was to just um, build more like a riddle thingy where you can where I can clone or where I can create costumes black costumes clone them and then make them go away so this project basically works like that here I can specify how many columns and rows I want um, and then I create a costume to make the whole stage um, like covered by clones of that sprite. So here I can create a costume and then I can click space to create all the things. And then I have an image in the background. And when I click, I make that invisible. And then you could just like 
guess what's what's there. So in this case, for example, I have uh, barley grains, and then we had other ones, so they were picked randomly, and then I could check whether. Oh wait, let me stop that again. Um, so here I had a mink and and, and different other um, images. And then when we talked about the paste on block, I thought, wait, let's revisit that project. So this is also something that we can do in between um, big releases. We just go through our old projects and see what we can do with them with the new methods that we have. And here it was totally possible to make an, a puzzle then from any image with any number of um, puzzle pieces. So what I did then is, um, Oh, damn, no, I put the zoom thing on top. Ow. Okay. Um, I created another script with which I could um, then paste the original image on all the sprites. So let me build that shortly. Um, so what I said is when I start as a clone, I want to tell that image to paste itself onto each clone. So we can use the paste on block and then we need the um, tell block. And we tell the image to paste itself on to the cover and then of course we need to wait for a second because um, we would also then before we go to a random position because if we move uh, before we paste wrongly so let's wait a little bit and then let's move to a new position or maybe let's wait until i press the key dun, dun, dun. Wait until um, not space but let's do um left arrow and then we go to a random position so let me try that if that works um so i click on space now. And then I, oh wait, I need to tell the image to show first. Ah, oh, now I have it. Oh, oh, sorry, need to run it again. Um, okay, let me press on space. And then it takes a little while. And uh, then I get my image on my um, puzzle pieces. And now I can press the left arrow to make them go to a random position. And this takes a little while in um and now i have my puzzle and now i can start puzzling it so that was a super quick method to solve the problem that took me forever when i had to do it with the graphical program so um this is the new uh, paste on block that we added in the last snap version and also an encouragement to revisit your old projects and check whether you can do something with them with the new methods that we included in snap and now i want to hand over to jens who will show you the new cut from block yay thank you yetka and as i'm sharing my screen i just want to point out that uh it was yetka who um came up with the brilliant word snapshot. That's totally her invention. Uh, this is why it's called snapshot now. So you're seeing my screen now. Yadka, could you nod with your head because I'm seeing you? Are you seeing my screen? Okay, fantastic. So uh, another thing to remember is that if you want to learn kind of this cool word, it's called spinnen. So you have to pronounce it a little bit Yiddish, like schmuck. It's something you don't have in English. Just remember when the Germans um, invented um, spaghetti, uh, the Italians ended up kind of pronouncing it all wrong. So it's spinning. And, you know, as spiders um, are doing these webs, this is something about doing stuff together. There are all these connections between, you know, us developers of Snap, but also among the community. And so the second cut block was something that came out of a... Um, spirited discussion in the forums. And there was uh, Pavel um, um, Belusov, I don't know whether he's here, and, and uh, uh, Simon Walters and said, now we have paste, we also need cut. And so we started to think what we could do. So one thing that, has, that I always liked was way back when in the early days of Scratch, um, there was a guy, anybody know, remember Chalk Marrow, um, fellow 
um, lawyer, as it turns out, Dan Pode, who did this wonderful project. Uh, it was called a snowflake designer. And um, I always wanted to do a snowflake designer. And, and now we can do it in a much cooler way. So I'm starting with the background. I'm going to the sprite. So this sprite is actually going to be a paper. Um, um, and it's not going to be draggable. And like, you know, one of these TV cooks, I prepared something. Um, I prepared, uh, uh, what, what are the triangle? I think that's what I prepared, a triangle XML. Um, oops. So this is basically a little script that um, draws a triangle. And, and the trick of this triangle is that it's exactly 30 degrees, which is why you need the tangents, which is why it's an advanced project, because you need to know trick. But what I want to do with this triangle that I've just drawn is I want to use it as a costume. So I'm going to um, switch to the costume of the pen trails. Um, then I'm going to clear those pen trails. Um, and I want to show this thing. Um, so let's do this. And now you can see the paper sprite has turned into this triangle that I've drawn. So I want to turn this into a snowflake designer. Um, so snowflake has a six-fold symmetry. So I want to do the old total turtle trip uh, trick, kind of repeating six times, turning 60 degrees and stamping it, right? Um, so um, let me try this. Yeah, almost, right? Um, so there's something missing in between. Um, and these are the mirrored uh, versions of that paper. Um, so what I want to do is like, um, I actually want to mirror it. So it turns out this is the kind of the second kind of cool thing that how do we mirror something that we already have? We can use the stretch block and say, I want to mirror the current costume along a vertical axis 100% and keep the horizontal axis untouched. So you can see it's kind of pointing to the left now. Um, so then I want to stamp it again and um, mirror it back. Um, let's try this. Yeah, now I'm getting kind of the full turn. Now we can add a little thing just, just for the fun of it. Like before the second stamp, um, I'd like to add a little contrast. I'm setting the brightness um, uh, a little less and then clearing the graphic effect. And then once I'm done stamping, I also want to hide the thing. Um, so let's try this again. Um, this kind of looks legitimate. So as I'm designing the snowflake, I want to fold and unfold it. So this gets me a new piece of paper and this unfolds it. So I want to keep track of this on the variable. Um, let us say um, folded, I'm going to initialize folded with true. Um, and then I want to dispatch on the state of that variable and say, you know, if it's folded and I want to unfold it, this is what I just did. Otherwise, I want to refold it again, which is just clearing it and again showing the piece of paper. And I want to be able to do that whenever I press the space key. And there's only one thing left is that I need to then set the variable. I need to toggle it. So I'm setting folded to not folded again. Um, so let's try this now. I'm pressing the green flag. I'm getting a new piece of paper. No, I'm not getting it because I didn't set the variable folded. Um, clicking the green flag, getting a new piece of paper. I'm pressing space. It's unfolding. I'm pressing space again. It's refolding. I can now hide the variable and create the last thing I need for this uh, project, which is uh, scissors. So I'm going to draw another project. I'm actually not going to draw scissors. I'm just going to draw um, a little yellowish uh, circle, um, which I'm just going to call cutter. And it's also not going to be draggable. And um, what it's going to do is when the green flag is clicked, it will forever follow um, the mouse. And if 
um, the mouse is down, it is going to do something interesting. It is going to use this new block. It is going to cut from the paper. Okay, um, that's it. Um, we're done. Let's actually try this. Um, so clicking the green flag, my cutter follows the mouse, and I should now be able to, to press it to cut things from it. So now I'm cutting here from this folded paper. Now I'm going to press space to unfold it. Ah, it's looking like a star. Let's refold it again and cut something here. Oh, I got another star inside. Um, what happens if I cut something here? Now I got a hole inside. And how about here? Um, so I can now, this is actually kind of a star. Um, well, what about a snowflake? Okay, let's, let's draw another one. Let's make another one. Uh, maybe cut through here. Um, how about uh, this again? How does this look? Almost like a snowflake, right? Well, not exactly. Um, maybe cut out something here. How about uh, something like here? And another one. And maybe one from here. Let's actually clip some more things away just for the fun of it. Um, make it a little more flimsy. Let's unfold it now. This kind of looks like a snowflake, right? Um, so here's a snowflake designer. And since this is a snap, I've um, prepared another sprite that's called effects. So here's my effects. And I should now be able to actually let it snow. Uh, here's the, my own snowflake that I've designed. It's snowing and there should be something happening because I'm also using the if is touching the pen trades block. So you can actually see some frost patterns uh, appearing in my window. Um, and so, you know, spinning in German is also kind of um, where the English word comes from, um, which is spins my snowflake. Um, so this is the cut block. It is happened out of a discussion among ourselves, but really out of a discussion with the larger um, community of, of y'all. And um, so again, welcome to SnapCon. And I'm now going to hand it over to Bernard for kind of the really, truly nerdy thing that we've worked on. Thank you, Jens. This was awesome. I'm not going to be up to the task. Uh, so let me share my screen. And what I want to show you is, uh, so we have this, this little project here, which I guess everyone has written a variant of. It's a classic maze scroller, right? And uh, so th th this all starts a couple of, uh, I guess, a month ago or so when I was building this project. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could you yep. move this um, Zoom thing away from the, oh. that it doesn't overlap with the stage? Yeah, I don't know where that is. Uh, it's right over the stage. <laughs> I can't really see it. Uh, okay, this thing. Yeah. Yeah, better. Excellent. Right. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Sorry. So, <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, for this project I was building, I, I needed a functionality that you can build in Snap, but was uh, rather slow. Uh, and that functionality would tell me the distance between an object and the edge of another object. Okay. You can build that by walking and then counting the steps it took you to get there. But that gets slow when you are mm, doing that repeatedly and with a lot of clones. So I was talking uh, to Jens and Yadka the other day and, and Jens started thinking of different ways we could actually use this functionality. So in the end, he decided to add it to Snap. And that's the new ray length option that you have in the distance block. And as you can see, when you click here, it gives me the distance between the object and the nearest edge of the other object. So this is getting really close now. Okay, so let me visualize uh, a couple of things that you can do with this new uh, parameter. 
uh, we're going to basically cast sort of a, uh, a laser pointer. So forever, oh, let me call this guy Ray. So we're going to shoot a laser ray. Uh, we're going to go to the player, okay? We're going to point in the same direction that the player is facing, direction of player, okay? So now basically we have this uh, object following us around. And now what we want to do is we want to hide this object. We want to set the pen down and we want to set the pen up afterwards, clear before all that. And we want to move the ray length to the nearest edge of the map. And that creates a sort of a laser pointer. Okay, that's, that's cool. Let's take it one step further because our uh, vision is not actually laser-like. Uh, we have uh, a range of angles, right? So let's actually try to model that. We'll start at angle minus 40 and we'll go to 40, for example. And we'll do this thing 80 times uh, with the only difference that now we're going to change the direction to which we point by this angle. And here we have a sort of a scanner, right? But this is also not how our vision works. We see all these angles at the same time. So one thing we could do is to just warp this stuff here. And there we go. Now we have sort of a, a visualizer of what the player is actually seeing at this point in time. Uh, it could use some additional features. For example, see how uh, it always looks the same regardless of how, of how far away the walls are. So we could actually, let me create a couple of variables here. One we're going to call length and another one we're going to call something like closeness. And these are going to be sort of invert inversions of each other. So let's see, once we're pointing in the direction we set length to this ray length. And for now, we're exactly doing the same thing. But now we're set closeness to some kind of inversion uh, of the ray length. So something like 2000 divided by length. So it's inversely proportion proportional to the length of the ray. Right? And this variable tells us how close a wall is to us, okay? So let's try to visualize that by changing, for example, the, oh, I changed the pen key, that's okay. Uh, by changing the brightness and setting it to how close an object is. Ah, and that looks pretty awesome already. We can sort of see shadows in here, right? Okay, what, what else can we do with this stuff? Uh, Let's see, instead of uh, drawing the rays coming out of the player, we could try to draw a histogram here, right? A bar graph. How would we do that? So we would, instead of uh, moving these steps, okay, so we'll always go to the center and the X is going to be the angle divided by 80 and multiplied by the stage width, where is it, width of stage, so that we distribute uh, all these rays homogeneously in the horizontal component of, of the stage, right? Okay, this looks funny as a bar graph, because bar graphs uh, are all pointing up always, right? All the bars should point up, so let's actually point in direction up all the time before starting to draw. There we go, that looks more like a histogram. Uh, not exactly though, right? All the bars should have the same, uh, all, all the bars should use up all the horizontal space that they have available. So let's actually set the pen size to be 
And let me reuse this, the width of the stage divided by 80, so 1 80th of the stage at a time. Let me just click and dump that. Okay, that's, that's sort of interesting. It's a fun visualization, but it still doesn't feel uh, very intuitive, right? And that's because when we get closer to an object, we see it bigger, not smaller. So, but remember we have this closeness variable here. So we could, instead of using the length, move the closeness. Uh, and let me do just one more thing. And you'll see why I'm doing that just in a second, which is that I'm going to center these bars in the middle of the stage instead of having them all start uh, here. And to do that, I will just place the rays at, okay. And now, if you'll allow me, let me give you a walk around this 3D space that we have just created. And let me go visit the snapshot 2020 letters that we have in here. And just to give you a visual cue, that's where we are now. Let's go see Alonso. We can actually go inside of its lambda hair. Hello, there we are. Okay, so this is how you very quickly, and thanks to this very fast uh, ray length primitive, can build a 3D world out of just a 2D map in really a very short time. Uh, one funny thing is that, uh, as you can see, we have this sort of fisheye effect. Let me explain why that happens and actually fix it for you. So the problem is we're shooting the rays in this uh, fashion, right? And then we're unfolding them to have them be parallel one to each other. And of course, this ray is longer than this one, but actually the distance from the player to the wall is the same. Uh, so what we end up is drawing this sort of graph that uh, shows up as a, as a fish eye uh, sort of thing. And what we actually would want to have is this distance, not this distance. Uh, so let's actually use the little bit of trigonometry that I still remember from school. That's not much more than this. Uh, and we'll multiply, what is it, the ray length? Yes. We'll multiply the ray length by the cosine of this angle, which happens to actually be this one. And that should give us this kind of uh, vision now. Let's see if that's true. There we go. Okay, so just for the occasion, uh, this, this would be a, a, a project starter, right, for a 3D sort of game similar to the shooters of the 90s. Uh, but you could go quite crazy with this stuff if Chrome actually lets me. How do I go to the next? Okay, I guess I'll have to load it. Oh, something funny is going on with my browser. Okay, so this is a project that I prepared to welcome you all to Snapshot 2020. And it's, as you can see, I've added some texturing. We have a textured floor. We can move around with the mouse, like in real 3D games. And let's see what we have here. Let me walk around. Oh, interesting, we have a sort of a round thing here, which incidentally you couldn't do in the 90s. And what's that stuff in there? Looks like a treasure chest. Let's try to open it. Oh, and awesome projects are coming out of it. And I guess that's all from me. And I'd like to welcome you all to Snapshot 2020. Have a lot of fun. <laughs> awesome. Woo outstanding. Boy, outstanding. Are there any, maybe one or two questions from the audience? Anybody? What level of knowledge is required? Actually? That's a good question. So, Brian, did you hear the question? So, uh, what, what level do you think you'd, you'd like to be able to, what, what's to, what do students need to know? Trigonometry, maybe, but perhaps you could help them with that, Bernard. What do you think in terms of what level that might be for? Actually, it's 
if you don't uh, factor in the, the, the fact that you have to use cosine to get rid of the fisheye effect, if you're okay with the fisheye effect, uh, you don't need any trick at all. Uh, you could right. teach that to uh, really young kids. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I won't dare to say an age, but mm -hmm. really young kids could, could totally understand that. Wonderful, sure. wonderful. And some of us are building curriculum for younger people. So if you won't mind, if I could borrow that, I think that'd be one of the most fun projects in the whole yeah. course. <laughs> I can't I want, wait. I want to clarify, this, this is not my idea. The, uh, this has been done like, that, like this for many years. The yeah. different thing is that we're using the graphical map here yep. instead of, uh, of an abstract uh, matrix where you keep the level drawn. So we're using Beautiful. the actual drawn map in 2D2.